we're really headed into no man's land. We emit 54 billion tons of CO2 every year. That is 100 times the weight of all the human beings in the world. We're having the warmest years ever on record. It'll be an inhospitable planet if we don't do anything. We also cannot shut down the fossil fuels tomorrow or in a week or in a month in order to transition into cleaner fuels. It is impossible for that to happen quickly, period. 40% of the people believe that we'll be off petroleum in 10 years from now. I'm thinking, is that on Mars that they believe that? People are wondering what we're going to be doing. At the end of the day, if what you care about is our planet and our home, then really you want to embrace everything that can get this problem solved. We need everything. We need wind, we need solar, but we also need these other options. If actually what you want is something where it's rather invisible, but it's doing the job of thousands upon thousands of solar cells and hundreds and hundreds of wind turbines, then that's really CCS. Carbon capture simply is capturing carbon from large emitters. It's the removal of CO2 from emissions, compressing it, putting it down a pipeline. And store it into deep reservoirs. There are no underground caverns or anything like that. What you end up uh, storing it in is, in is in things like this. And this is a, a porous sandstone. So while this looks like a solid rock here, up to probably 20% of it is just airspace. And when you have this over the space of miles and miles and miles, you have a very large storage cavern within these rocks. we can actually see what the plume looks like underneath the surface. There's about 50 plus technologies that you can use to monitor the subsurface. And it's not rocket science, it's not new. It's just using the tools that we have now to guarantee that this can be a safe process. So I can drill a well and I can put CO2 in there. But essentially I'm just creating a really expensive garbage dump. But if you can use that CO2 for pharmaceuticals, you can use CO2 to make fertilizer. We can also use it in cement, plastics, gases, alternative gases. You know, this idea that you capture it and turn it into something you can sell, who wouldn't love that idea? But the amount of CO2 that we need to capture, it's just not realistic. If you do the math, without storage, we're not going to make an impact on the climate fast enough. We have to do storage and we have to do carbon to products. We need more shots on net. Enhanced oil recovery is the number one use right now for uh, CO2. Typically, a lot of oil is left in a reservoir just because the energy that uh, drives the oil is depleted. Most of them now are on their last legs, they're at the end of life, but they still got half the oil in them that was there when you found them. But when you inject CO2, it charges that reservoir and it makes that oil more mobile. So when I put CO2, when I use it for enhanced oil recovery, I'm getting revenue back from the oil because I'm freeing up the oil that's stuck down there with the CO2. And a lot of people think that, uh, why use CO2 to make more oil? Storage with enhanced oil recovery, there is a, an economic conversation there, so that at least opens the door and gets the conversation going. We use oil. Oil is a requirement in our societies today. So if we can produce those products with a lower carbon footprint, we will be further ahead. 
while storage is going to be necessary, um, we also need to use enhanced oil recovery for that return in the near future. If you can generate a revenue stream by doing an environmental good, then people want that revenue stream if they can get it. We have a place to put our CO2 and the place is economic. And also, all the CO2 that's used for enhanced oil recovery is ultimately captured in that reservoir. So that's the beauty of it, is that you can maximize the oil production, and the second thing is you can store the CO2 permanently. That is well proven, safe, we know where it's going, we know where it's going to places where the reservoir has been under pressure for tens of millions of years. We are nowhere close to the limits of how much CO2 we can put underground. If we took all of our emissions, we would have centuries of injection before we started to hit the limits. And it actually is completely safe, completely understood, and it's secure. It's not coming back. Now, without carbon capture and storage, it's going to be very difficult to reach some of the goals that we have set by the Paris Agreement, for example. The Paris Agreement was signed on by almost every country. The Paris Agreement is basically a weight loss club. Every country in the world raised their hand and said, I'm going to lose five pounds or I'm going to lose 10 pounds. Well, guess what? They all got to step on the scale. All of the commitments by all of the countries actually don't add up to getting us where we need to be. There's no math to get there that doesn't involve carbon capture and storage. If we actually want to hit our Paris Climate Accord goals, you will need CCS. One of the things we constantly battle is this question of how do you get CCS more visible in the general community? People know what a windmill is. They know what a solar panel is. They don't know what CCS is. They don't never seen it. It's not another type of energy. It's not an oil and gas. It's not a coal. It's not a natural gas. It's a solution to transition out of those technologies. It needs to be in the conversation because we need everything in order to get to the two degrees target. One of the problems that people perceive right away is that if I capture carbon, it's gonna cost money, and it does. But what's your alternative? You know, if you wanna use that fuel, you must clean it up. It's really finance. Each one of these projects is a big investment. I get three things. It's expensive, requires government funding, and still doesn't make me money. Now we've shown the process or the way to clean it up. The next thing is to make it more economical. Canada's been a leader from day one. There were studies and reports and investments in Canada that showed that not only was CCS important, but also relatively straightforward to do. This was the policy that was going to help Alberta meet its carbon targets. All of that really helped kind of convince Shell corporately that Alberta and Scotford was the right place to do it. We were kind of expected an operating cost of around $44 per tonne, which for Alberta with a carbon price of $30 per tonne meant even after funding we would still be at a loss. Over the last few years, we're actually seeing that cost to operate quest in the mid $20 per tonne, which is important because it means actually now that carbon price pays for your operation. It's turned a corner in a way in terms of people are starting to see that you can knock the price down. There are gonna be ways to do that. Cleaner uh, with CCS. So I think that momentum is, is starting to build to see how we can uh, deploy more of this and get those costs down. The learning, the technology, the sensibility, the deployment, 
all of that is exemplary to the world. There are definitely policy drivers that we need. I think that incentives like 45Q are going to be fantastic. 45Q is going to be big. It's going to accelerate the deployment of CCS. The tax credits will be $35 a ton for enhanced oil recovery or other forms of utilization and $50 a ton of CO2 for anything that's sequestered and permanently stored. Now at $50 per ton for sequestration, $35 for EOR, that gap is starting to close. And we are going to see dozens and dozens of new projects that involve power plants, heavy industry, pipelines. We got to remember that industrial processes like steel making, like plastics manufacture, pulp and paper, these things all emit CO2. Electricity isn't going to decarbonise these industries. A common misconception is that all of our CO2 emissions come from the power sector and from driving cars. That's just wrong. 20% of global emissions come from heavy industry, it comes from glass, steel, cement, concrete. These things have big carbon footprints associated with them. Importantly, we actually have no other technology at all to go after those emissions. You have to use carbon capture and storage, otherwise you just can't get those sectors. With so many recent changes in a positive direction, with governments changing their policies, we can move forward and do what's right. And the right thing is to combine carbon capture with a multitude of industrial facilities. It's a win, win, win for everyone. Our good friends from the Boilermakers are here today as well. And I've got to say, they, they woke us up to something. Here in Canada, we have 36 lodges, all of them dealing with carbon. Maybe using steel to manufacture equipment, working in a mine, working on the ships. You know, CCS is the greatest facilitator into the future of high quality, high paying jobs in often rural and regional areas. You know, it's nice to have the planet hospitable, but we also need people to have meaningful lives and purpose. The name of the game is to keep people working so they can pay taxes to contribute to the communities. A lot of these coal facilities, when you look at a parking lot, the cars are in the, at the coal power plant. There's not going to be the cars at the wind farm. These capture units are big. They require a lot of pipe fitters and boiler makers and steel workers in order to make these things. There is a value in preserving communities. There is a value in expanding and securing a manufacturing base. And those values come from CCS. I don't find any other reason why we wouldn't want to support this. Taking a leadership role in advocating this technology. I see a natural fit between the needs of unions these days, the needs to preserve communities as a whole, and the opportunity that CCS provides. All Boilermakers need to be involved and advocate this technology because it affects all industries. Do you agree that we need to do more? Do you agree that these jobs are important? Do you agree that we should not burden our children and grandchildren? If you can start with something like that, then you can work very quickly into a position of, hey, we all know we got to do this. We want to be part of the solution. And this is what we're doing. And we are going to be part of the solution. This can be done.